Hello students, welcome to lecture number 15 in this series. In this series, we are going to discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of working stress method. In last lecture, we have discussed about the working stress method in brief. Let us start with the advantages of working stress method. So first advantage of working stress method as we have discussed previously also that this method is very simple both in concept as well as in the applications also. So that's why due to the, its simplicity this method is again widely adopted for some specific structures. Just like for the design of water tanks or liquid retaining structures the working stress method is adopted than the limit step method. In this method, it is assumed that the working stresses are low. Or the lower working stresses are assumed, that's why the method gives the larger cross section of the members. The working stress method design usually results in larger section of structural members as compared to the limit state method because just as I told you that in this working stress method the stresses or the working stresses are considered as a lower stresses and as the stresses are lower hence for sustain the loads larger sizes of sections are required. Again one more point is mentioned in last lecture that the reserve strength of material is not considered in working stress method. So that's why also the section sizes are more. And due to this that as the sectional sizes are more, so as an effect of this, the working stress method gives better serviceability performance because the section sizes are more and hence Due to this larger section sizes, the deflections are very less and hence there is no need to perform the deflection checks separately as we have to do in case of limit state method and that is the one of the advantage of working stress method. There is no need to perform serviceability checks like uh, check for deflection and check for crack widths etc. It is also reasonably reliable because as there is very less possibilities of deflections and cracking hence we can rely on the structures or structural dimensions sizes what we obtain from working stress method because it provides the more safety to the users also. It is essential to have a knowledge of WSM because it forms the part of LSM. Just as we know that in all over the world, the limit state method is widely adopted for the design of reinforced cement uh, concrete structures. So, to understand in a better way the limit state method, we must have a knowledge of working stress method because as I discussed previously also in some lectures that the limit state method is just a combination of working stress method and ultimate load method. As 456-2000 has incorporated limit state method and working stress method. Let us discuss the disadvantages of working stress method. Just discuss in last slide as an advantage of working stress method. But in other way that the larger size of sections is a disadvantage also because as we have to use the more material for obtaining the large size of the sections unnecessarily the structure will becomes uneconomical and that's why we are taking it as a disadvantage also because in limit state method we are getting a much smaller section as compared to sections what we obtain in working stress method so that's why 
the larger size of sections is a disadvantage for the working stress method also the working stress method assumes that stress strain relationship is a linear for concrete which is not true why because as we know that if you plot a stress strain graph for the concrete we know that that up to a certain point that is up to elastic limit that concrete is also uh, following the straight line that is a linear relationship stress is directly proportional to strain if you plot stress in along the y axis and strain along the x axis then up to certain limit this is it just follows the linear relationship that is it follows the hooks law but after yield point it follows the non linear relationship for the all grades of concrete the same behavior we are observing so that's why the assumption what we did is that the linear relationship which is not true for the concrete also for the steel okay so that's why that is the disadvantage because the structures or the materials are not behaving like this and that actual behavior is not considered that is the disadvantage of working stress method then working stress method does not consider the mode of failure of structure it does not consider the mode of failure of structure just like as we know that the structure particularly rcc structure in that rcc whatever cement concrete part which we are using we know the properties of cement concrete that cement concrete is a brittle in nature so that concrete will may fail due to excessive crushing or due to brittle failure and the ductile behavior of steel is also to be considered because the steel can carry the some amount of tensile stresses but at the same time same amount of tensile stresses cannot be carried by the concrete and sometimes if you exceed the loading on the particular structure irrespective of considering the amount of steel or amount of concrete then any one material may get fail so just like for that normally we are using the concepts uh, like the balance section under reinforced section or over reinforced section we'll discuss about this in upcoming lectures but that concept is not considered in working stress method which is considered in limit stress method so that's why this is the this advantage of working stress method the modular ratio design results in larger percentage of compression steel now what is the meaning of compression steel that whenever normally we are going to provide the reinforcement for the beams as we know that the steel is normally placed at the tension zone because this zone is subjected to tensile stresses that is known to us but again for some times or due to some reasons sometimes we have to place the reinforcement in the compression zone also which is called as a compression steel and so just by using the modular ratio concept in the design it is observed that the large percentage of compression steel will be obtained as compared to the what amount of percentage of uh, compression steel what we get in the mistet method and uh, this large amount of compression steel will leads to the uneconomic design because this compression steel is very rarely used in uh, some in some particular cases only so for general conditions for general uh, cases if we provide the large amount of compression steel then it will be not come in actual use so that's why it is not utilized in actual cases so that's why it will be uneconomical to put the mover reinforcement here okay so that's why this is a disadvantage of working stress method then working stress method fails to discriminate between different types of loads that are that act simultaneously but have different uncertainties 
just by adopting the working stresses can uh, uh, working stresses parameter for the design the differentiation between the different types of loads and their different uh, their uh, uncertainties is not considered in working stress method uh, and in limit state method it has been considered so that we are we are using the appropriate partial safety factors in limit state method but as in working stress method that partial safety factor is not adopted hence we are considering the only permissible stresses points or permissible stress concept only so that's why it it fails to discriminate or differentiate between these different types of loads and their possibilities of uncertainties so due to this sometimes there may be a sudden failures so it will be very dangerous condition so that's why that is considered as one of the disadvantage of working stress method again this working stress method gives the impression that the failure load will be always equals to working load into factor of safety failure load means the structure fails at a particular load that load may be termed as failure load so that failure load at which the structure will fail will be always equals to the working load into factor of safety that is the impression what we got from the working stress method but which is not actually true why right? because we know that that whatever loads which are acting on the structure those loads are called as a working load and in limit in working stress method we are using the factor of safety so by multiplying with the factor of safety to the working load we'll get a some particular amount of load and it is not necessary that the structure will fails at that particular load only sometimes the structure may take that load effectively or sometimes the structure may take the very less amount of load than what we get from this product so it is not always true that the failure load will be equals to working load into factor of safety sometimes it is may be less or sometimes there may be possibilities that the failure load may be more than this failure also so that's why this concept is not true hence we are considering it as a disadvantage here so these are the disadvantages and advantages of working stress method we stop here in the next lecture we will discuss the remaining points thank you if you like my lecture or the videos then please click on the like button also you can share this video with your friends so that they will get the better understanding of this subject and to get the further notifications click on the subscribe button thank you